Переход на дистанционное обучение стал новым вызовом для современных President of uh, OSF University, Rahim Beknazarov, uh, acting uh, president of uh, Zhubanov University in Aktabe, and also uh, director of uh, Azerbaijan University of Oil, uh, Mustafa Babanoy. And uh, special guest, uh, Sergei Hristolubov, is the regional director of QS, and Bakhchan uh, Abdraimov. Uh, questions and also would also ask their questions uh, to the management of the uh, educational establishments and also ask those questions to the experts that we have today. And in, uh, in few words, I would like to mention that uh, indeed the digital era, post-pandemic situation, all these uh, challenges that are in front of us and uh, We had to deal with them last year and this year, and it uh, became sort of a test uh, for resilience of the universities. And uh, so this was all about online education, uh, setting up and uh, access to the online platforms. And, they'll, and uh, this allowed our students uh, to uh, compare Uh, to which extent that education that they are getting in the universities, uh, to which extent they are uh, corresponding to the standards uh, which are offered by the leading uh, educational platforms. Uh, and our sessions will be about discussing those. So now, just in a couple of words, I would like to explain how it is going to be done. So now we'll just voice their names so that they can be ready to ask the question. Diana Janilina uh, from AOSF University, Kuznetsov, Dina. Adilbekov Asim, Batambay Asim. And Irjanov Alimjan. We're going to have questions from the student, and then we're going to invite our speakers. And we will discuss those topics that we have prepared for the panel session. And I will give the floor to our speaker, to Sergei Rostalov from QS. World University, ranking, World University ranking. ranking. It's a rating agency. So I can say that 13 years ago, I personally met with Zoya Zaitsev, who invited her to Kazakhstan and Uh, to Kazakhstan universities and starting from 2009, Kazakhstan University started uh, to participate in this rating. 
And Kazakhstan University are presented in this rating. Kazakh National University in the top 200. And other universities are catching up. And with that, I would like to give the floor to for his presentation. Thank you very much, dear moderator, dear colleagues, dear speakers. Thank you for the discussion, for the opportunity to participate in today's discussion. I hope that the pandemic did not touch you or any of your loved ones. Today we're going to talk about all this question that I have in the next five or six months. So, I hope that you can see my screen, which I'm sharing at the moment. You can see it, right? Can you confirm that you can see it? Yes, we can. That's great. So, the topic today is re-engineering of education, which transformations the students want from universities. In March, we had a survey of our students about their uh, plans and the ambitions. And the survey was quite big. It had over 2,000 responses. We had people from 130 countries. It's a very big uh, survey that we carry out on a monthly basis. When pandemic just started out last year, we did this survey almost every day, every month. And so now I can show you the information that we have received. And that will enable us to understand better uh, that concern students and uh, their parents. Our mission, this is something we start every time. We want to support um, and motivate people over the world in the implementation of their potential. We started our survey that we share here today with you with a statement. We offered a statement to the students who started their education last year when the pandemic just began. We asked whether they were happy that they started their education in the middle of pandemic or whether they wanted maybe to postpone it till another year. And we were happy to see that more than two thirds are happy that they started their education last year. And one third said that they would rather postpone their education. Now, four months of education, 19% prefer online. Twenty-three percent have no preferences to online or offline, and fifty-eight percent that they would rather continue studying on campus. Many students now study not only during the day but also during the night. You can see that two-thirds of students had to uh, take part in lectures or seminars that took place at night. And as for effectiveness of online education, 19% believe that online education is organized very effectively, 41% said it's rather effective, 20% believe it's effective, 9% said it's not effective at all, and 8% said it's effective but not the best. So we can see that many universities updated their programs in order to face the existing challenges. As for the optimal format of education, 39% believe that education should be on campus and 61% believe that the mixed format online and offline would be the best. Vaccination. Would you get a vaccine if you were offered one? 65% said yes. 
10% said no and 26% don't know. If university required uh, vaccines for the trips abroad, would you get a vaccine? 39% said yes, 33% said no, 28% said don't know. And we also asked our respondents where the university should require students to take a vaccine in order to come to the country where the university is located. 50% said yes, 27% said that they don't know whether the university should request a vaccination in order to get to the country where the university is located. Uh, 23 said no, the university should not. We asked which services are the ones in demand within the university. 28% said that they ask for help when it comes to employment. 28% use foreign student support service, 18% psychological support service, 17% visa support, 17% financial support, 17% psychologist advice and support, medical center 15%, placement service 18, support complex 8, and studying languages of the country university 7%. These are the main results of the survey that we had in March. The main points that we can see in our activity, let me quickly go over for that in the next slide. First of all, in the student community, there is a high level of stress. We shouldn't think that the opportunity to study from home is a more comfortable one for students. Many of them actually miss communication, they miss their friends and traditional way of education. That is why for both students and uh, faculty, online education is quite stressful. And both students stress. and faculty need support in order to overcome this stress. Second, there is a great delay demand for education abroad. Many students delay their plans for education abroad for at least one year. And just yesterday, we finished survey of UK students, 61% believes that all the traditional formats will be available as of 1st of September. And, and just 15% believe that restrictions will not be lifted. Over, over these answers, over these students, we have quite a fight. We participate in many different projects, uh, for example, organized by the Swedish universities, I jointly with the British universities, who try to invite more students to come to their university. Third point that we should draw attention to is the fact that we need to create conditions uh, for new common foreign students to be able to come for help to certain services, be it financial uh, service or visa uh, support service. And all the universities are updating their programs. And now keep in mind that all the employers are used to the fact that diplomas are issued online quite a lot. And many employers now start asking for a diploma of the micro program, micro masters, which can be accomplished within a very short period of time. For example, AI or computer programs. So universities will need to face these challenges as well. How can the traditional format of education for four or five years can compete with the micro diploma, so short-term programs? Thank you very much for your attention. I'm ready to answer to your question. Thank you very much, Sergei. It was very interesting to listen to your presentation, especially your uh, survey that you carried out. 
It gives us a lot of food for thought, especially for the management of the higher university, higher education, and we accumulate, we see the accumulated wishes and expectations of our students. Let us continue with that, our distinguished experts, and I would like to give the floor to Rosa Abishova, which is the vice director of the South Kazakhstan University, named after Awezov. Good afternoon, dear guests, dear participants. Today we would like to share with you the re-engineering of educational process experience of our university named our OS. It is implementation of the digital university on the basis of the principles of ENQA. The development of our economy, especially in the area of the digital development, should also be oriented at the quality of Stop being prepared. Today, important trend is globalization of education. At the same time, the main mechanism of globalization is the use of digital technologies in educational processes. Education process cannot be imagined without using mobile apps, expanded reality, and other developments. But we need to understand that. that Introduction of this latest innovations into education is not the goal in itself. The issue of digitalization should be linked to the way that we can combine both traditional and new ways of education. По сути, система образования это мост, который должен обеспечить уверенный переход в цифровую. System education is a bridge that can provide the move to the digital era and also the growth of the expectations of our people. That is why the efforts of the university should be placed not only on resolving the current problems of the university, but also on the redesign of the quality of education that can also meet high requirements of the education. We also need to have innovation in education. And we need to move to the digital format. This report was developed by the working group in QA and provides recommendations to provide quality of digital education, part one. So the recommendations include the following. Policy for quality assurance, design and approval of programs, student-centered learning, teaching and assessment, student admission, progression, recognition and certification, teaching staff, learning resources and student support, information management, public information, ongoing monitoring and periodic review of programs, uh, cyclic external quality assurance. You can see that we follow the quality assurance standards of the European standards. Always of university follows this document since the document was published. And having used it for the last year, we were already acquainted with the digital format of education. This document is the is G um, output to a document which were developed within the context of the new digital era. The main goal is to contribute to the overall improvement of quality of education and working upon this document. We're also improving such areas such as institutional policy and the strategic development university methodology of uh, education infrastructure, upgrade the development of digital skills, availability of electronic library and virtual laboratory, management of information and provision of safety and security. So you see that we are rethinking and redesigning the whole educational process. We have a concept model of digital university serving the basis for the whole university development. By doing that, we are bringing the education to a new level. We have also developed a roadmap of the digital university, which includes information system of management, individual educational trajectories, education content, and digital literacy. The university also developed different programs and monitored them in order for these programs to be adapted to the needs of the digital economy. They have a new group skills uh, and the new companies such as 
economic and digital competencies, which also include analytical skills, creativity, digital literacy, and others. Based on the national atlas of the new uh, professions competence, we have been introducing changes to the educational program, to the curriculum by correcting a certain skills such as IT, critical thinking, creativity, communication, and others. Information climate of the university is based on a number of resources, virtual resources as well. It also includes such a platform which is the product of the university itself, such as this. We should also say that EA learning format has impacted the development of digital skills of both students and faculty when working in different resources of digital university. For example, e library, you can see on the slide, which has a lot of advantages. One of the best ways of reaching the high results of quality education is the use of national and international uh, media and digital resources, which enables our faculty to implement revolutionary technologies, and they can also unlock students' potential by also getting uh, an effective feedback. For example, university signed an agreement with the university, uh, with the Center of Digital Development, the goal to integrate online courses into the main uh, educational programs. And we also have agreement with new MSCs, and we will be able to brand all these online courses with their further interpretation into our national language. In order to reach multiplication effect by using online content, we have currently initiated the creation of consortium of a network of Kazakhstan University in uh, technology area with our partners. Digital transformation enables change in the educational process, which at the end of the day is aimed at meeting the requirements of all the participants and it will also put a university on the map of education in the world. And my last slide, I would like to urge everyone to do this. The Cambridge University says we are 800 years old and we're still working. I would like to say that we are now 77 years old and everything is still ahead of us. Thank you very much. I'm ready to answer to any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Rosa, for such an interesting presentation. It is quite impressive that South Kazakhstan University is moving ahead at yeah. such a pace when, uh, when it comes to digital technologies. I am sure your students appreciate it. I would like to ask for feedback from our students. And now it is time for you to ask the questions ask questions to the speakers or to you, to any participant of today's uh, session. I would like to give the floor to Diana. We can't quite hear you, Diana. We can see you, but we can't hear you. My microphone is on. Да. Добрый день всем участникам сессии. Уважаемая Роза Джанусбековна, мой вопрос адресован вам. My question to you, Ms. Rosa. As you know, your placement, uh, according to your specialty, is quite relevant in the southern region. And uh, so what kind of work is carried out in your university to make that possible? Thank you for your question. So you're talking about the job placement. Uh, my colleagues know that the index of job placement is uh, one of the leading indices uh, and uh, any university is going to be judged uh, <coughs> to a large extent by that as well. And uh, Mr. Krustalov also mentioned that this um, matter is always all the time relevant and, uh, and internationally in the universities they would have a special service for supporting that and uh, we have that kind of center in our university as well, the center of uh, career development uh, and job placement and uh, according to the state uh, center on pension deductions uh, 
uh, so according to their uh, assessment, uh, so our job placement rate is uh, up to 89%. So our students, 89% uh, of them will get uh, get will get job placed. And uh, so I talked about the digital platform, and uh, we have uh, two platforms available: Faculty uh, uh, and uh, BIM. The first platform is uh, uh, proceeds from uh, a Russian platform, and uh, the BIM is uh, uh, the one born in Kazakhstan soil, and uh, each student using those two platforms can uh, uh, submit uh, an application and uh, would uh, attach uh, the resumes, and uh, our stakeholders are also quite active uh, participating in those platforms and so they're interacting in that way in our university we have also uh, created a database of our graduates and uh, we are monitoring their careers uh, they are looking what kind of careers they're having and uh, you also asked uh, a question about the retraining uh, it is uh, uh, the demographically so we have a high birth rate in our region and uh, many schools are uh, popping up recently so we have over thousands of them thousands of them and uh, we have uh, a shortage for uh, teachers and uh, and uh, by a initiative of uh, the Ministry of Education, we opened up uh, the uh, side entrance, as we would call it, and uh, when uh, non-pedagogical specialty students can also retrain uh, for pedagogical skills, and we are supported uh, by the local government, uh, by its uh, Department of Education, and uh, as of today, we have over 100 uh, uh, participants uh, in those courses, so, so we're retraining them. And uh, so this again testifies to the fact that uh, these people are uh, already working and uh, the previous speaker talked about the mini programs. Uh, and uh, this is a mini program in the limits of 40 credits. And uh, this is actually uh, uh, covers uh, that need uh, for the uh, teachers uh, in our region. Thank you, Rosa. I would like to continue this discussion in a way from the perspective that not all students uh, who have graduated from universities, they are job placed according to their specialties. Uh, so if I take my observations in uh, Nur Sultan, so we didn't have a profession as uh, um, a delivery uh, stuff. Uh, so, and uh, whenever I have to deal with the delivery staff, uh, uh, many of them would say that they graduated from some university and uh, they are quite comfortable in that uh, new profession they have. And, uh, and uh, so the question then is, uh, uh, goes uh, to the demand. Uh, is there real demand for the profession that uh, our young people acquired, uh, because uh, that is the core idea for which uh, they choose their uh, specialties. So, so we will give you uh, an opportunity to talk later on as well, and you can answer that. Uh, you can make comment uh, uh, at that time, and uh, this is uh, now we want to give an opportunity to speak to the students. Uh, Dima, you can t take the floor. I greet everybody. I would like to ask uh, Rosa about the internships, uh, professional internships, and uh, because the, this would be an important component uh, and would allow you to find uh, your new uh, job. Uh, and uh, what uh, uh, the academic freedom gave you, uh, gave you in terms of uh, creating your autonomous and independent uh, uh, academic programs, the academic freedom was issued. Yes, uh, I agree with that. And uh, we have uh, introduced uh, in all the cycles uh, the internships of different types of internships. Uh, and uh, all our educational programs, they proceed from uh, the internships uh, and uh, from practice, we created, uh, we entered uh, agreements with uh, over 800 uh, uh, stakeholders, and among them, we have um, uh, major 
um, uh, opportunities uh, like Cas Phosphat, Fussmaster, Asia, Trafast, uh, Standard Cement. So these are major, major companies who can offer a lot of opportunities for uh, internships and uh, the freedom that we enjoy now allows us uh, to create uh, all comfortable conditions for our students uh, so that they could uh, go through internships that would involve uh, some professional activities. And, uh, and I uh, visited all of those companies and uh, I was really delighted uh, seeing what kind of conditions they are ready to prepare for our students. And uh, we've been able together with them to uh, 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 renew uh, and uh, remake uh, uh, the um, uh, curriculum of uh, the internships uh, and uh, I think uh, this will uh, really create conditions uh, for our students at the, the end of the day to be really in demand in the market and uh, I uh, think that uh, all the internship uh, um, uh, possibilities that we have uh, they would make sure that uh, they will acquire all of those skills which are prescribed in the educational standards and uh, on the, also in addition to what I said before, we have uh, now taken the direction and creating interdisciplinary educational uh, programs and uh, all advantages and disadvantages of one profession will be uh, covered by uh, as a profession. So also you have the notion, uh, as you know, we have the notion of major and minor. So the training goes uh, not only in one uh, uh, single direction, but we want to make sure that they would get skills that will be really required in the market. Thank you, Rosa, for your very informative talk. And uh, uh, I think we should uh, go and continue our discussion. And uh, I want uh, the students from other regions also uh, join us. And uh, we have the head of the Akta Bay University as well. And the university and the students from Akta Bay University, from Zhubanov University, ASEM. Albekava. I can see her. Please, uh, uh, Sam, you may shoot a question. You may ask your question. And uh, uh, what is your perspective uh, at education? Uh, so what is uh, uh, not satisfying to you and uh, the uh, uh, higher educational establishments of where they should be uh, going to? And uh, I greet uh, all the participants of this fest and uh, I'm thankful for this uh, opportunity to be part of this and uh, what kind of works are uh, carrying out uh, to carry it out today in our university on introduction of uh, digital technologies and um, uh, so let us give the floor to mr bek uh, so and uh, i will i am supposed to answer this question i think i am the active president of uh, Zhubanov university i am also very glad to greet uh, all the participants i express uh, to you, Mr. Madaraita Bahajan, and also my gratitude to our guest, Sergei Khrushchev. Uh, yesterday with uh, uh, him, uh, we've been participants to our academic council, and I'm very glad to see you again on uh, today's event. Uh, and uh, undoubtedly, I want to say that uh, Kazakhstan in uh, 12 months was able to go through huge changes. Uh, and there have been huge changes in the culture of educational system in our country. And uh, we went uh, through huge changes uh, without uh, this pandemic. Uh, this process would take uh, five to 10 years easily. Um, and uh, undoubtedly, so we are summing up what we achieved and uh, the pandemic actually revealed those uh, positions that uh, we couldn't uh, uh, go by and uh, uh, the openness of society. So we, from uh, uh, proctoring of uh, our exams, uh, so today, it is not possible to conceal that electronic uh, trail and as uh, it is now uh, accepted to, to be uh, set uh, among professionals. So the sheer uh, truth is open today and each uh, educational establishment is uh, trying to adapt to this uh, uh, and uh, the digitalization is the normalcy now and uh, we uh, cannot deny it and uh, our kids they are uh, playing only digital uh, games and uh, so 
voluntarily or involuntarily the uh, universities are getting adapted to that and i am not going to speak about the quality of reports but i but i wanna uh, really speak to our students and uh, and uh, our university is a big uh, regional uh, university and we have over 15000 uh, students and uh, undoubtedly we are changing over to uh, the major changes to make major changes in our ecosystems to make it digital uh, three years ago we uh, were very glad that we were able to set up uh, uh, the uh, the center for providing services uh, to the students so we were content with that but uh, as of today that is not sufficient uh, so uh, so uh, now uh, we uh, embraced online services uh, uh, and uh, and uh, we have even an app uh, that uh, could be downloaded to your smartphone and uh, about 30 services uh, can be provided through that app uh, through your smartphone and the students uh, for them there's no need to come to the university to that center anymore and uh, using your your digital uh, signature so before it uh, could have been done only face to face and uh, and uh, i would like to emphasize uh, another aspect uh, the getting adapted uh, to the needs of the uh, digital culture so we are doing not only uh, by ourselves so we have to do that in contact with our partners and uh, one of the examples uh, and uh, and uh, this year, uh, in the first September, uh, we are going to have students in IT medicine. So 50% uh, will be provided by our university. So we uh, will be working in that field uh, as a, a main provider of service. And then another 50% of services will be by Ospanov University. That is another university. And uh, uh, the pandemic uh, showed uh, that uh, uh, the medical personnel, even though they had uh, tomography data, uh, they uh, could not use it because they didn't have necessary skills. And the two presidents of two universities, we decided to do together uh, that uh, curriculum uh, for uh, lifting up uh, the IT skills uh, and also uh, we are going to embrace another program very soon again related with the uh, healthcare and uh, all this is to be for the further good of our students and uh, Mr. Sergei Khrustalov was quite right when he mentioned about this and he we also discussed that yesterday if today we uh, not embracing digital culture if you are not uh, changing the the ecology of our university the, internally so voluntarily or involuntarily we have to compete internationally and we have to embrace we cannot deny that uh, um, competition and the students today they uh, realize that actually uh, they can uh, uh, actually the part of the study programs uh, of uh, the foreign universities and uh, we as universities also realize that and uh, we uh, have to accept that challenge uh, and so that's the reason that we are working with other universities as well together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we have another student, uh, 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 Mr. Islambek. Uh, Islambek, uh, would you share what kind of questions you would like to ask? Uh, I uh, greet you all. I am grateful for this uh, possibility to be part. Uh, and uh, Mr. Rahum, I have a question to you. As of today, uh, the sh shortened uh, uh, education programs are uh, becoming popular. So uh, maybe maybe bachelor programs could be uh, uh, shortened uh, down to two years. Uh, I got you. 
So let me answer in Russian. So Islambek, uh, you understand Russian. So let me answer in Russian, even though the question was asked in Kazakh. So indeed, we already considered it in our strategic plans and uh, the pandemic situation also uh, made us uh, to uh, quicken up our efforts and uh, we are not going to reinvent the wheel and the uh, Narik Bayev University, uh, well, where are those who uh, uh, are graduates of colleges, uh, they can then uh, join the shortened uh, uh, programs. And uh, if uh, the program was uh, for three years, uh, so then also having uh, had additional studies in summer, they can uh, graduate it in two years. And, uh, and uh, if we then uh, are able uh, to satisfy uh, the educational uh, standards requirements so, so we can launch uh, that kind of program in the fall. So the one who uh, joined uh, our university and who is the uh, graduate of the college, uh, they can actually uh, choose uh, to uh, take a shortened uh, uh, bachelor program and it, it would be also cheaper for them. And since we are the part of the Bologna system and in Bologna system, the most important uh, part is uh, the personal trajectory of a student and uh, he or she is supposed to, to select uh, uh, the trajectory and they should also uh, select uh, what should be uh, in the electives and uh, they uh, uh, can enjoy the services of a consultant that the consultant that uh, would uh, tell them what would be most suitable for her or for him uh, for uh, developing his uh, or her talents and the, the international practice shows that uh, a student may and if uh, traditionally uh, the, the bachelor degree could be uh, made in uh, four years. So the option for a student could be that uh, he can make it in uh, three years. And then and again, depending on the financial standing of the student, uh, they can make it even longer. So uh, even in five and six years. So, so in between, uh, the student can go and work and then rejoin the university again. So, and in Kazakhstan, we still use the Soviet uh, system and uh, to, to some extent, we force them to make selection, but uh, the, the recent practice showed that students, they are uh, not uh, in their liking, they don't like it. Uh, so, so that is uh, my answer to you, Islam Bek. Um, I just wanted to say, in addition, my understanding of this question was that uh, today many uh, educational platforms, including Coursera, suggest uh, get uh, a, a diploma of a bachelor or magist or master uh, in a short period of time, as opposed to, to the uh, ordinary universities, and it's going to be a challenge uh, uh, for the universities as well. Uh, because uh, through those courses, they are getting also good education and uh, the uh, price tag is also quite attractive uh, for, uh, for the students. Uh, and, uh, and also the time-wise, uh, they are quite attractive. Such courses will be quite useful not only for the university, but also for the Bologna process. And I believe that we need to review many standards when it comes to the education programs. Yes, I just would like to add that now the practice exists already even in Kazakhstan. For example, the group construction company already has its own corporate university and they train their specialists themselves and it is, it is already a challenge for all of us. It is also done in Russia, Kirim Greg does that. And I am sure that we will just lose in this global fight. Whether you want or not, uh, this is what we need to do. 
Dear participants, I would like to give the floor to yet another speaker. That's the director from Azerbaijan, Mr. Mustafa Ogli. And Mr. Rector, we're happy to welcome you here at our online festival, Nobel Festival. Thank you very much for joining us here today. It is with great pleasure that I'd like to give you the floor. Thank you very much, distinguished moderator, for providing me with such an opportunity to speak here. I listened to my colleagues here carefully. We're all in the same boat and we all have similar problems and challenges. Today I would like to talk more about educational process in Azerbaijan and I will share with you the information on our measures against pandemic and what we are doing in terms of education during pandemic. I was told not to prepare a presentation, so I didn't. I will try to be very brief in covering these issues. Our university was built in 1920, so we actually turned 100 years old during the pandemic year, and we celebrated it at the state level. This is the second university of the Republic. How was the university found in 1920? There was a big oil boom, you know that in 1886, oil was extracted in Azerbaijan for the first time in the matter. And after that, of course, we needed a lot of specialists in this area. We did it based on the definition of the school, and then we turned into a Baku Technological University over the 100 years. We changed our name eight times, and all former Soviet people know this university as Azneft Him. But during the independence years, we also changed the name, and we had similar challenges that other universities of the former Soviet Union had. Over this period, over a hundred years, we prepared more than 150,000 specialists. And in Soviet time, the problem was one, now there are different problems. And when the just started in 2020, in the March, we also moved to online education. It is not a remote education because it is online education. We did not change the methodology of education. We just uh, carry out education online. In our country, even before pandemic, we had certain changes in our educational area and we had a lot of attempts to improve the quality of education in order to uh, provide universities with high quality of uh, high level specialists and scientists. Also, we adopted the state program and the best students of a bachelor degree were sent to different uh, countries to continue their master degree, uh, the top 100. We sent a lot of Azerbaijani students abroad and, and those people are back now and they're working for the good of the economy of the country. After that, our specialists wanted to continue this program. There are new programs as well, the so-called improvement of the competitiveness of the Azerbaijani University at the global arena. This program was adopted in 2019 and it covers 2015, 2023. We wanted to prepare and launch 
new programs, including medicine, economy, IT, pedagogy, and engineering. In our university, we actually we have one more university within our university. It's a joint university. Our university started working with bachelor, so the same way that the university a bachelor degree usually takes three years, we also have developed a special methodology that was approved by our partners. They have their own program, their own methodology, which we agreed upon, and now we train specialists on several uh, specialties. They can receive a major, a minor, such as in oil and gas, and maybe in some other some other specialties. They can also receive a Strasbourg University diploma and diplomas from other universities. So we have double diplomas system. Within this program, we are now training our own specialists and prepare our new programs. And we prepare many people for the bachelor degree and also for the master degree. We have over 19,000 people were studying in our university. We're constantly working on improving the quality of our education. Thank you very much, Mr. Mustafa. It was very interesting to hear you speak. For me, it was especially interesting because I have a lot of colleagues and friends in Azerbaijan, including directors of universities, and I know that a system of education in Azerbaijan is quickly develop, and I believe you need to think about having double diplomas with Kazakhstan University and uh, share experience with our universities. I think that would be mutually beneficial for both parties. That, that could give a great impetus and a great synergy effect uh, for increasing the demand of uh, the majors that you provide. We uh, have some other uh, students also from Octubing University. Unfortunately, our time is limited, so I would just want to give the floor to our main stakeholders, to students. Please, I get him. The floor is yours. I get him. Hello, dear participants of the conference. My name is Egerim, and here's my question. Rahim Agibayevich, what changes would you introduce in order to improve the quality of education and, and in order to increase the demand on our graduates? Well, I don't think we can answer that in five minutes. <laughs> Well, I should that this is a global issue, and it's true that we cannot answer to that question in five minutes, but we look at the needs of the market. We're called the regional university. We provide different specialties, uh, pedagogy and engineering. Engineering, for example, is focused on those enterprises that work in our regions are Octubing metallurgy plant, and we work with stakeholders, work with employers, and we do what they need, what they ask. We also have a dual education program. We send our students to the internship to these enterprises. So we, as a university, provide the, the theory, and then enterprise provides practice. So we believe that this complex approach to the education, having both theoretical and the practical aspect, that now gives its results. And we have over 90% of our graduates being employed, including metallurgy majors. This, this is a great pride for all of us. We are a regional university, and we prepare teachers in traditionally 
uh, back from Soviet times, we have students uh, from Kazalarda region, from Kulsara region, from Aterao, Jankildi uh, region, Urals, Western Kazakhstan region. So all of these regions send their students to us. And it's not just students who want to study with us. Send their requests for students to be uh, taught with, with us. It is with great privilege that I can say that last year we also invited students and we provided them with accommodation. So you see that the market needs, the market demands are taken into account. But of course, we face challenges. We, we are not hiding that. Uh, for example, when it comes to Serpen uh, program uh, employment, we have some issues. Not everybody gets a job with this major market needs are constantly monitored and i believe that the problems that we have here in our active university or active region are typical of many regions of kazakhstan and the experience that south kazakhstan has and i believe that mr mustafa maybe we'll try and cooperate with you as well we would like to learn from the Azerbaijani experience. We should probably incorporate it here. Thank you very much. We only have one minute left. And I would like to give the floor to another student, to Alem Jan. Uh, please briefly ask your question. Thank you very much, dear participants of the conference. Как вы видите, будущее образование после пандемии и ее влияние на каким оно будет в нашем вузе и I will try to answer briefly. I'm, I'm sorry, the, this is a very big question. And today, during the discussion, our uh, speakers will answer that or have answered that. So if you allow me, I will uh, come to the conclusions because then we're going to have another plenary session. So if you allow me, I believe that this question that the student asked relates to all these figures, and we can give the main conclusion that the digital transformation led to transformation of university. This is the new challenge, and students are the main element of education. And today, digital education became the most competitive challenge of all the universities in an educational platform that exists today. They became challenges not only for universities, but also for the uh, Bologna process system as a whole. This is the conclusion that we can come to. And at the end, I would like to thank all of our speakers for finding the time to be with us and for participating in our today's discussion i would like to particularly thank the south kazakhstan university activity university and our colleague from azerbaijan university of oil and industry our colleague sergey Christalubov, who is doing a great job on university ratings this this is very useful for our university there's also a challenge for the universities that they have to face every year they need to prove that they are the best and they they belong to this list of top universities i wish activity and creativity to all of our students and i hope that our universities will continue to be in the part of those changes that take place in the global educational space thank you very much dear friends and all the best to you thank you